Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? I got a budget made for these animals, for what I'm going to be doing in terms of uh, moving forward, I guess, for the month or two. Just to keep a rough idea on, on, on where things are headed financially, right? So this month, I think my big plan as of right now is going to be to uh, uh, go a little bit slower on the fertilizer for this grass. Just a little bit slower. I'm only going to put urea on it. I'm only going to put nitrogen on it uh, this month. If I need to put more uh, phosphorus or potassium on it, I'll do it the next month. But here pretty soon, this grass is all going to get uh, plowed up anyway to put in pearl millet. So... I figured this month I would put on uh, just uh, nitrogen. I put on just nitrogen and I put on, I put it on a little bit slower. Uh, my major reason for looking to put it on a little bit slower, let me see if I'm, oh, yep, he's over here. Uh, this guy, you see, he's bloating real bad. But I got a couple of animals doing this. It's not just him. Um, I have uh, I have two other animals that I saw this happening to yesterday. But he's bloating up real bad. And so uh, I'm gonna go a little bit slower on the uh, on the fertilization of the grass. Just a little bit slower. And I'm only gonna put nitrogen on it. If I put uh, well. Okay, so if I if I if I if I fertilize this whole field with 10 pounds of nitrogen, I ran the numbers on it this morning, I, uh, but I didn't write it down on my hand or anything. So let me think about it. Um, if I had to put 10 pounds of nitrogen on this field, then the urea is 4600. I need about a. Uh, uh, 20%. Uh, I need about 20%. Oh, man, this is real difficult. I need, oh, oh wait, it ain't, it ain't that difficult. If I want to put a, I, I need to put about 45 pounds of, uh, of, of urea per acre to get 10 pounds of nitrogen. <laughs> Is that right? Oh man. Well, okay. I'm 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 looking to put about ten pounds of nitrogen on the soil per acre, and so that means I'll need to put about uh, I'll need to put about twenty pounds. Excuse me. I need to put about twenty pounds uh, of urea per acre to put ten pounds of uh. Wait, is that right? That that don't that that don't seem right either. That 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 can't be right. If 100 pounds of urea is 46 pounds and I need 10 pounds. Yeah, I guess that's about right, huh? I need I need about uh, 20 pounds of urea per acre. And so I it, wait, but th that that can't be right. Is that right? I got cattle rubber. Okay, well, I mean, I, I'm gonna figure it out. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm but when I go back inside, uh, I, I'll I'll run through the numbers again. But one ton of urea costs about $550. And so uh, uh, fertilizing this field, I ran the numbers, fertilizing this field this month is gonna cost me about $150. I'm gonna slow down on the uh, the urea for, uh, on the fertilization of this grass because I am seeing some bloat on these animals. But uh, one, uh, one, one major thing that, um, but uh, I, I figured that this would be a good time to make, uh, to, uh, to, I guess just, if I put, okay, to describe what is happening in terms of why, okay, this is one of my animals that's, that's bloating real bad too. She, she, you see that gas bubble? She's blowing up real bad. I also got a brangus animal over here that, that's uh, bloating up real bad. But, uh, yep, this, 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 uh, this animal right here bloating up real bad too. This is this is a steer. Uh, I I thought that this was maybe a, a heifer, but this is a steer. I have I have a uh, I have a uh, a heifer brangus here somewhere. A, a brangus uh, heifer animal over here somewhere. I just don't know where she is. 
But uh, yep, I got. But I got a lot of bloat on these animals right now because the grass is growing is growing in too hot, and the cattle are just eating it up. Here, when the weather gets warm, this is gonna be a big problem. Um, if they if they look like this when when it gets over uh, 95 degrees outside, they could uh, collapse. They could uh, heat up and they could just uh, collapse. So. I need to get this bloat problem solved and, and the way for me to get this bloat problem solved is to put more roughage in front of them but for me to put roughage in front of these animals i need to be able to grow this grass to a point where it's developed to uh, a degree that the nutritive value of the of the grass drops but if these animals are walking around on a uh, on, on a on, on a lush field on a lush field of grass, they're gonna eat as much of it as they want because the, the the lush grass it, it tastes good. It um it, it it's supposed to, it, it tastes better. It's more palatable than the grass that has the uh the kind of like the the seed heads on it and stuff. And so they're gonna go for the lush grass, and when they eat the lush grass, they're gonna gorge themselves on it, and then this is what's gonna happen. They're gonna bloat. And so for me to really get a, a good hold on their diet, these animals, I, I need to be able to, to uh, essentially, uh, well, I need to be able to harvest the, the, the feed for them at, at the correct stage of development for me to get a real good grasp on their diet. Because if the grass looks like this, the grass looks like this i mean it's going to be real high in nitrogen or excuse me real high in a real high in protein and it's going to make them blow it up real bad and so uh yep but uh my big reason uh so uh when i was making my budget this morning i guess i'll just uh 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 tell y'all what what happened when i was uh, going through my budget this morning but my big reason for why I don't want to feed grain is because if I wanted to, I was making my budget this morning and I said, okay, well, if I only feed these cattle grain one time a day and I feed these animals uh, three pounds of grain each. So I feed about 75 pounds of grain a day, about 75, 85 pounds of grain a day. That's going to cost me about $450. Me fertilizing this entire field to put grass in front of all of these animals, as much grass as they want to eat, is going to cost me a hundred fifty dollars. But y'all, y'all, y'all. But I mean, uh, but but y'all see what what I'm saying? It the the minuscule amount of grain that I'm able to get, it just ain't worth it. Uh, it, it's just not what well, if, if I if it, it would be a better investment of capital for me to just grow their food here Like if I grew the grass here, it cost me so much less money. Like I save so much money Because I don't even have to worry about bailing it because these animals they're gonna go around and eat the grass up themselves I don't have to go and cut it or nothing. The big major disadvantage is that I don't get to really uh gauge what their feed quality is like and so that's why i end up with animals with bloat but for me to get be able to gauge what their feed quality is like i just got to put up a cross fence because if i put up a cross fence i can keep the cattle off of the grass until the grass has developed to a stage where i say okay these cattle can just have at it and so i'm gonna get that cross fence put up but that, that that's my, my my big big reason for uh for for growing grass here instead of feeding grain is because it, it just saves me such a drastic amount of money like if i was gonna feed these cattle uh on just straight feed like if i was just gonna give them grain with with uh, with roughage and i was gonna give it to them all uh just uh if i was gonna bring it all in to feed it to them my my, my cost would go astronomical my cost would go from about 200 dollars a month to like two thousand and then i would uh go bankrupt immediately <laughs> so i mean the, the 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 tremendous advantage in just growing the grass here for these animals is that it saves me an astronomical sum of money and the but the major disadvantages is, is are that one 
I it's difficult for me to be able to gauge what kind of food quality they're getting. When I get feed grain, I know the I know the, the, the quality of the feed because it'll say right on the bag. It'll say it's a protein this much, fiber this much, etc., uh, fat this much, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It'll say all of it right there. The, that's one of the major advantages of feeding these animals a, a grain. Um, another uh, major uh, advantage of a uh, of a uh, well, another uh, another big thing is that the weather needs to be good for me to be able to grow grass. And the weather usually here in this area, um, I, I mean, unless it's like some uh, some devastating drought or something, uh, usually that the we usually don't see stuff like that. Uh, I mean, it may happen once once in a decade. But it, you know, I mean, it, it does happen, but it, it doesn't happen every year. Like if I were to take the average, like, you know, I've been alive for, uh, for, for, for 30, uh, 31 years. If I, t if, if I look back in my lifetime and I was born and raised here in Texas, except for a, maybe a few years, just a couple of years, but I, I, I pretty much spent my entire life in this area. Um, if I look back on my life. I mean, the weather just is what it is, in all honesty. If I took the average for everything, it it, it, it kind of, you know, like, for me to be worried about, like, oh, my God, is, is the weather not going to be good for the rest of my life is, is, uh, is, is, it ain't something to be worried about. I mean, uh, uh, the weather just is what it is in this area, uh, as far as what I've seen. Like, I, I really don't think that I'm going to wake up for the next 50 years of my life and the weather in this area is just going to have drastically changed. Like, the, the, I mean, that ain't something that I worry about because why should I, right? I mean, the, the, there are a lot of things that I need to get done that are more important than worrying about that. And so, uh, yep, I mean, uh, it just is what it is. And the averages for the for for uh for like crop yields and and the weather and the precipitation and all that it it, it all it's all usually stays within a range and so this area of of of, uh, of texas is known for it's a very 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 kind of a mild weather is uh well it ain't mild in the summer it gets real hot but the weather just is what it is right and so yep uh i'm gonna be uh this um uh, well w while i was running my budget yesterday and this morning i kind of just thought about what uh what's going on and and everything and yep at, at this point I, I ain't gonna really uh, uh uh pat myself on the back quite yet but um i'm doing extremely well uh like most of these animals when i look at them i would make a substantial profit on them um, if I took them to market today, uh, I would make a substantial pro uh, profit. Like uh, all these animals here, these, uh, the, these, uh, the, well, m maybe she needs a little bit more time. She, she is a real, real, real pretty heifer. She got, she got a, a, a great features on her, but she's just a little bit small. But these, like these three steers right here, if I took these animals to market, I would make a substantial profit and a lot uh some of that has to do with the cattle market doing so well right now beef prices being so high but when i was running my budget this morning for what i'm going to be looking to spend this uh this month as well as uh, uh just everything going on I, I i i am doing extremely well i've kept these uh cattle on a real 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 rigorous schedule and i kept them and i and i and i stayed uh, and i stayed a uh, real 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 methodical on what i was doing and at this point, I would say I'm, I'm making a pretty substantial sum of money. Um, I, I think my break even on these cattle right now is like I got to make something like 600 uh, to 625 dollars an animal. And everything after that, I would uh, uh, would just be money in my pocket. And this guy right now, he probably about 550 pounds right here. This fella right here, he's probably about 550 pounds. And so if I had to make 650 on him, that, that that'd be like a dollar something a pound. And I I I uh, uh, you know, I, I would I would make money on an animal like this. And I got a, a lot of my animals look like this. And my I think my my long term uh uh my like my 3 to 4 month goal on these animals right now is going to be to get them uh 
because this silage or the, this uh, this Sudan grass crop that I'm going to be growing here uh, starting this week, I'll be able to put a lot of weight on these animals for a very low cost uh, with, with that crop. And so I think I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to push their weight up as high as I can over the next three months with this crop that I'm growing. And then I'm going to take them to market and uh, look to bring in cattle in the uh, in, in October when 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 cattle markets are usually low. Cattle markets usually slow down in October when the weather kind of turns iffy. When the weather kind of turns, uh, when, when the weather becomes a little bit more difficult, the cattle crop usually, uh, the, the cattle prices usually drop. And so um, I couldn't, I, I think my, my big plan as of right now is going to be to uh, hold on to these animals for about three more months. I'm going to feed them on that Sudan grass that I'm growing up front. I'm going to put a lot of weight on them over these next three months, and I'm going to do it very carefully. I'm going to have to make sure that these animals aren't bloating by the time it, it hits summertime. That that's, that's, that's one of my big concerns is that I need to make sure, especially with Sudan grass. Sudan grass has a lot of protein, and it has a lot of biomass. So uh, yeah, I need to be a little bit more meticulous on that, or I, I need to just stay diligent about that. And make sure that these animals are getting the the, the correct uh, uh, the correct feed. But um, one of the things that I've been thinking about maybe doing with the Sudan grass up front too is that uh, hay prices are astronomical right now. People are paying like uh, like three hundred twenty five bucks, three hundred fifty bucks for a ton of, of hay right now, and uh, a, a tonnage of grain costs about four thirty five, about four hundred thirty dollars. And so um, I'm honestly even considering uh, selling the hay and just bringing in grain and just feeding, just grain feeding these animals. I, I'm, I may do that in all honesty. Um, if, if hay prices are that high, like me, I, I don't I don't make the prices right. I, I look at the market and I see what the prices are and then I decide on what I'm going to do to make money. I say, okay, this is what's happening. How do I make money? That that that's 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 how I look at it. I don't go, oh my god, I'm gonna go charge an arm and a leg, and I'm gonna make a whole bunch of money, and and everything's just gonna be phenomenal. That that's how I that, I don't look at it like that. I look at the market, and I uh, see just see what's going on. If hay prices are high, I'll sell the hay, and I'll sell the hay, and I'll and I'll buy the grain, and I'll just grain feed these animals. But uh, if cattle prices like cattle prices right now are high. And I think cattle prices are going to stay high for the next few months at least. And maybe they'll take a dip in October. And so uh, uh, before it hits uh, that, uh, b before it hits uh, October, maybe I'll get rid I'll, uh, I'll feed these animals up until then. And then uh, let, uh, take them to market, make my money on them. And then, uh, and then uh, bring in uh, new cattle in, in October. Maybe that's what I would do because uh, this this uh, this Sudan grass that I'm growing up here is going to be a it's going to it's going to be a lot of food. Uh, these animals they they are going to get um they are going to put on weight very quickly with that Sudan grass. And so and and the pearl millet that I'll be planting back here too, the animals will be putting on a lot of weight. And so I, I figured that that may be what I do. And and the long story short, right um on on the money. Is that uh, if I can make one thousand dollars a month here, if I take a if I can make one thousand dollars a month here, and I take a one hundred percent loan to value loan from the USDA to buy a new piece of land, and I need and I owe the USDA two thousand dollars a month, and I buy eighty five acres, if I can make one thousand dollars a month here. That means I only need to make $1,000 a month on the 85 acres to be able to pay for the land if I combine my assets. And so the long, the, the, the big, uh, the big, the big idea, the big, uh, what, what I'm looking to do in terms of uh, everything, budgeting financially for the future and everything is if I can make $1,000 a month here and I go and I, and I, and I just save that money, if I can, if I can save up because th there is zero reason for me to save up for a down payment, right? If they're not going to charge me PMI, if the USDA is not going to charge me PMI for a 100% loan to value loan, why would I save up money for a down payment? I would just take the 100% loan. And so 
the big idea for the budget in terms of me budgeting for my future and, and what I'm looking to do with this money and, and, and that kind of stuff of what, uh, and, uh, and what kind of money I think that I can make on this farm here is that if I can make $1,000 a month and I can uh, save up $12,000, I would be willing to take a 100% loan, <clears throat> a 100% loan on an 85 acre field that I pay $2,000 a month for. Because then I would have enough money in the bank to pay for six months of debt service as well as be producing $1,000 of income on this farm. And if I owe $2,000 a month for the farm, the other 85 acre farm, I can use the money from this farm to partially pay for the other farm until that other farm produces an income. And I would only need to make $1,000 a month on 85 acres to be able to pay for that field. And anything that I make beyond that would just be money in my pocket. I could start paying for this farm with, with the money or I could just put the money away or I could uh, leverage the money for even more land. But that's the big idea. The big idea, it ain't for me to make a thousand dollars a month here for the rest of my life. Like I ain't looking to do that. That 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 ain't the big idea. The big idea is for the thousand dollars a month here to cover half of the debt service costs on a new field until that field is able to produce an income and then I would pay for the field with the income that the field produces. So, yep, that's kind of like the long, long term. The shorter term right now is to put some weight on these cattle. Um, uh, th this summer, when the weather gets good and I start pulling a lot of Sudan grass, I'm going to put weight on these cattle. And then uh, look to get uh, look to sell them uh, about the seven. I don't know what the seventh month is. January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Around around July, I'll be uh, looking to put these animals back on market. And then uh, and then by October, I'll be looking to bring in more animals. In these next three months, my costs are going to drop drastically. And my uh, my output is gonna is gonna is gonna go up drastically. Um, the the amount of weight that I'm able to put on these cattle is gonna go up exponentially higher, and my costs for doing it are gonna drop tremendously for these next three months. Like I've already broken even. Um, the, these animals, I've, I if I took all these animals to market right now, I would I would leave that market with money in my pocket. Except for uh, maybe some of my real small animals, like like this fella right here, I wouldn't take him to market yet. He's too small. But um, the 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 a majority of these animals, if I took these animals to market right now, I would have to make about six hundred dollars an animal on average to break even. And so I would leave the market today with with money in my pocket, with with a net profit, which is a great situation to be in as of right now um to to have already gone but a, a lot of it also has to do with just the, uh, the 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 cattle markets are so high right now and so but these next three months i'm, I'm it's going to be my opportunity to to really push my profits up and in, in all in all honesty the whole thing about making money is that i made money is that i'm making money right now because i'm i'm you know like it, it takes me a lot of time and a lot of effort to do this. Uh, I mean, I, I've, you know, it, it took me a lot of effort to do this. And so that, that that's why I'm making money. And so, I mean, you know, if, it, you know, realistically, anybody else could do this, right? I mean, this ain't rocket science. If somebody really wanted to, they could go and they could learn how to raise cattle and they, they, they could raise their own beef and everything. And, uh, you know the the whole oh my god everyone should be doing things for free i don't believe in that at all i, I don't believe in that one bit the the whole idea of people should be working for free it, 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 it don't make sense to me i believe that people should work for a uh people should uh should earn be able to earn what they make and so you know this this took me a lot of effort I kept these cattle on an extremely meticulous schedule. I was very diligent in the upkeep of these cattle. And if I make money, 
then uh, I, I see that as a as a great thing. I, I see it's like, oh man, I see that as a very very positive thing. And so, yep. But these next three months, I'm going to I ha I have a, a very 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 a golden opportunity to make myself a tremendous sum of money on these cattle. And I'll be doing it because uh, that that opportunity will be in, in, the, in that I, I'm able to grow my hay crop here. I'm able to grow the the, the crop for these animals to eat here on, on on my property, and so that's where the uh, the the opportunity for money is going to be. I don't know what these two are doing, <laughs> but uh, yep, that's the plan. I'm gonna. Uh, make as much money as i can these next three months on these animal on these animals by putting as much weight as i can on them and then i'm gonna take them to to market by about july and then by october i'll be uh bringing in some new animals uh but yep it looks like uh well this month the budget is gonna be high i'm gonna be spending about um I may be spending upwards of $700 just because I'm putting grain in front of these animals. If I wasn't putting grain in front of these animals, my uh, my budget would drop to about uh, $250. But, you know, but I mean, that, that that's one of the things is that I, if I, you know, if I put 50 pounds in, let's say I put uh, 1,500 pounds across these animals uh, uh across these animals let's say i put on uh, 1500 pounds across the herd if the, if those pounds are valued at one dollar an animal i've made 1500 dollars. and so uh if i put grain in front of these animals and that cost me an extra 450 dollars a month and these animals really enjoy it even if my budget is uh 700 dollars for the month if i put 1500 pounds on these animals I still make a net profit of $800. That's how I look at it. And so uh, if the animals will really like it and they want to eat it, I, I'm going to just give it to them. I'm going to just let them have it. I'm not going to sit here and uh, be like, oh, my God, I'm not going to give these animals any grain. And they're just going to have to go walk around eating grass all day. I'm just going to put the money into it. It's fine. I got a credit line that has 0% interest on it until uh, November of this year. And I can buy things on it. I got about $10,000 left on it. And so uh, I'm gonna buy everything on credit, with just the anticipation that um, yep. Uh, well, that that I mean, these animals they're gonna put on about the if I put all of them together they're gonna put on about 1,500 pounds. Uh, re realistically, that's about how much they're gonna put on, especially with the grass buffet growing in right now. The grass growing in real fast right now, and so. I do it for the for for the for the welfare of the animal. I do it because I believe that the animals are really the, the animals really like eating grain. And I know a lot of people got got problems with grain and they they don't like grain fed or some people don't like grain fed animals. But when I look at what goes into grain, it ain't a big deal. It's like almonds and alfalfa and corn. It ain't that big of a deal. And so I just feed it to them. Uh, yep, I just let them have it because they really like eating it and. Yep, uh, it, it just gives them something, something else to eat other than this grass that I planted for them. Uh, putting on uh, uh, 1,500 pounds for $700 a month, is, is, is even at $800 a month, it's very good. It's very good. I mean, it, it, it ain't, it ain't, uh, it ain't gonna, you know, mess up the, the budget or anything like that, so. Yep, I actually got to go and uh, get these animals some bloat medication today. So uh, I'm going to go do that. Y'all have a good one, YouTube.